Now this lesson is going to be focusing on how Richard I secured the throne of England. So we've already looked at Richard's claim to the throne. Now we need to develop today how Richard kept that power and made his, his kingship a lot more secure, a lot more powerful, which allowed him to keep hold of it. Now, what we need to understand is that Richard I wasn't in England a massive amount of the time while he was the king. Most of the time, he was on a crusade. We will touch upon that in a future lesson, looking at how Richard made sure that England was governed well, so controlled well, during his crusading period. Now, this is the unit one that you are doing at this stage. Now, this lesson, just underline where we're at, because remember, what we've got here is what the exam board give us. So we've looked at the last lesson, his claim to the throne, and what we're going to look at for this lesson is how was his power secured? And we're also going to look at Richard's character. OK, now the exam board give us this for a reason. In previous years, the last two years, this is what the wording of these um, this specification is what has come up in the exam. So you need to be aware that it's important that we identify what could come up in an exam. OK, now we have no idea, really. We just have an understanding of the topics. But as the years go on, it will become a lot clearer in terms of prediction, hopefully looking at what the exam board have looked at and what the exam board haven't looked at. And it's also a really good tool in terms of when you're revising, have you looked at all of these? Now, there is going to be a video on every single bullet point in this and for every part of your GCSE. So, how to secure your throne. Now, Richard had a glorious coronation. Now, for those of you that can't remember what this keyword means here, coronation, is when the king's title becomes official. It's when they're crowned in front of many people and it's a national celebration. He was crowned on the 3rd of September, 1189. Even though he went against his father, his brother was far too weak to be considered king. So that links back to what we did uh, last lesson on his claim to the throne. And also not forgetting this keyword here, primogeniture. It means that Richard inherited all land and titles from his father and his father being Henry II. So Richard's desire after coronation was to go on crusade to help reclaim the Holy Land. Now, a crusade okay, is a battle to, uh, against another group. And in this case, it was a, a battle against the Muslims who had conquered Jerusalem following the Battle of Hattin in 1187. Now, what does Richard need to do to make sure everything remained safe while he was away on crusade? Now, as a king, it's really tough. Okay? Think about it as like a teacher. If you're a teacher, what are you going to do to make sure that everything is still just as good if you had a day off training? Well, you need to make sure of a few things. You need to make sure, first of all, organised. You need to make sure that you put people who are going to look after the country in positions of power. You might also need to make sure you don't have enemies. As a king of England, the worst thing that you could face was someone invading your area. You need to make sure you don't have any enemies. You also need to make sure that invasion possibility is limited. OK, there's lots of things the king needs to consider while while he's not there. Is it organised? Do you have many enemies? Make sure that possibility of invasion is very limited. Make sure that the army is in place. Make sure that people are happy. If people are happy, there's less chance of invasion. All right, so all these key things here, we're gonna look at today about what Richard actually did to secure his throne. Now, this did come up in an exam uh, last year, in 2000, I don't think what year it is now. In 2019, this came up. And the question was, explain how Richard was able to secure his throne, okay? Now remember, if it's an explain question, you need three paragraphs, and you need to try and get three lots of evidence explained. If you can't, two is okay. One is risky, just in case it's fine. 
So what Richard did to do to secure his plan? I'm going to read through a range of actions that Richard did, and you need to consider what are the positives of his actions, what are the negatives of his actions. Now, again, you can follow the video and make notes as you go, or you can pause it here now and make notes before we start. OK, so first thing, Richard made peace with the men who fought against him in the past when Richard rebelled against his father. So first thing that Richard did was make peace with people who he had fought with before. Now, why would this be good? Well, it's a very positive move. Mainly because Richard is doing two things. One, removing his enemies. By making peace, the chances he'd sign some sort of treaty with them, he may even give them some land. He is getting people on his side. That's the first thing. The second thing that's really important here is if people are on his side, it means there's less chance of invasion while Richard is away. Because obviously while Richard's away, if there was something, if something was to happen, the chance is it would be very difficult for Richard to stop it because he's going to be, what, a good eight months away because of his travelling to the Holy Land, Jerusalem, where you couldn't just get back overnight. So Richard made peace with men who fought against him in the past when Richard rebelled against his father. Hopefully, by making peace in the long term, Richard is going to establish a form of respect from his once enemies. So by making, by making them peace with them, hopefully he's going to gain some form of respect in the long run. The next thing Richard did was he appointed William Longchamp Chancellor to manage the kingdom in his country. Longchamp was a respected noble who paid for his position. So, another thing you have to do while you're secure, to secure your throne, is to make sure you have a strong leader while you're away. Now, this is important. Now, William Longchamp, there's two arguments to this. Longchamp was a, a respected noble. Now, why is this good? Well, very simple. If he's respected, the likelihood change the possibility. The possibility of invasion is much lower. People will listen. People will obey, and people will show the same level of respect while Richard was away. I'm going to put this in brackets, hopefully. And there's a reason for this. And William Longchamp, being a chancellor, means he has all the attributes to be a leader. So he might be able to lead an army. He might be able to ensure that finance is collected on behalf of the king. But the big problem here Longchamp paid for the position. Now, why is this a problem? He's basically paying for respect. Now, if someone pays for a role, instantly they might lose their respect for him. Now, in this case, William Longchamp wasn't well respected in the long run. And now, this is just something I'll add, but while Richard was away on crusade, John invaded. Now we'll look at that in a bit. Okay, John invaded in 1192. During this time, Longchamp was removed as he was disliked by so many people. So it's all well and good having a respected noble, but the problem was Longchamp got his position through money, not actual respect. Now the next thing here, Richard appointed his half-brother, Geoffrey, Archbishop of York. Clerics could not become the King of England. Now, by appointing a family member, an Archbishop, 
it means they can't challenge for the throne, mainly because it would be a significant sin. Okay, that's one thing. But also, Richard was very clever. Why? Richard was clever because he gave a family member power. So does his half-brother have any reason to invade? No, of course he doesn't. If he's been put in a position of power, now Archbishop of York was, an, was a powerful position. It was second to the Archbishop of Canterbury. So by being given that position of Archbishop of York, he had power, he was appeased by Richard. It allowed Geoffrey to continue to have influence in the country, which allows for more peace when Richard is away. Okay. The fourth one, Richard gave John land and titles. Now remember, John is Richard's brother. If anything, John is Richard's biggest threat. And I'm going to add that there. John is possibly Richard's biggest threat. Richard made John Count of Mortain in Normandy, an area which would have plenty of land and give John power. He did not give John any control of castles as they could be used in rebellion. Now, once again, this shows that Richard was very clever. He gave John something that for most of his life, he never had. And what was that? Land and power. By giving John this land, it means that John is occupied somewhere else while Richard is away. That's really, really clever. By making him a Count of Mortain, it gives him some power, it gives him some want John to go against him. So Richard knew that John could have been a threat. So by giving him power, it could and should lead to peace while Richard is on a crusade. On top of this, Richard was also very clever by not allowing John any castles. Now, we might look at castles today and think, well, what's the big deal? But castles were the main force behind warfare in this time period. If you had control of the most important castles, you were very, very strong. By not giving John any castles, it reduces the threat of John attacking, but also if Richard wanted the land back, he could get it because John, even though he had power, was limited in his military um, arsenal. So he had very little to fight back with. Okay. And this last bit, this shows that Richard really understood the importance of England. Now, Richard banned both Geoffrey and John from England for three years. Um, the most important thing here was he, he banned John for three years. Richard anticipated that he would be away on crusade for that long. So first thing, he removes the main threat of invasion. Important. But the biggest problem here is, what if the crusade went longer? What if something went wrong? For example, Richard get captured. Spoiler. Okay. That's something that Richard may not have considered. But what you've got here is all the things that Richard did to develop his securing of the throne. Now, if we're going to put this in GCSE, GCSE terms, what you've got here is your evidence. And what you've got here is your explanation. OK, if I could spell that right, that'd be great. That shows you've got your evidence. You know, one reason why Richard was able to secure the throne was that Richard made peace with the men who fought against him in the past brilliant evidence. This helped him secure the throne because 
He's removing his enemies, which would lead to peace. You know, by giving them land, he's getting people on his side. And if people are on Richard's side, there's less chance of invasion while he's away. And in the long term, Richard's going to establish a form of respect from his once enemies. It shows you the importance of evidence and explanation. Okay. So if we just go back to what we've we've been doing for this lesson, um, evaluate how Richard secured the throne. We've got that right there. That is how Richard secured the throne. Now, the next thing we need to look at is Richard's character. Okay? And we need to also, you can also say that Richard secured the throne because of his character. You can also say he claimed the throne because of his character. Now, this is a source from um, an eye, well, a first hand account from the time of Richard's reign. And this is what they said about Richard Richard, who had a line, was a great man, perhaps too great. Richard was at his finest superhuman, that is worse than pleasant and inhumane. Although preeminent, he's outstanding, the soldier and engineer, he was shrewd in politics and also capable of diplomacy on the grand scale. More generous than his, than his father, nobler, more imaginative, less careful, he bid for more glittering prizes and took far graver risks. Not as clever as Philip the First, didn't King of France. More wayward, he tried by tremendous effort to win back those advantages which, in his better moments, he gave his rival. During his short life, his reputation was fabulous. Now, what you need to do is read this and fill in the positive and negative character. Can you think of anything positive about Richard's character, based on this first-hand source, or anything negative? Now, just to help you out. He was an outstanding soldier. But instead of just writing good soldier, so I'll add it here. Why does that make Richard so impressive? Well, if you're a good soldier, that equals better protection for the country. That's very important to ensure that there is no invasion from foreign individuals. For example, Philip. Okay, so instead of just writing, he's a good soldier, get used to explaining it. Now, instead of just using this, you've also got this information. Richard was seen as a great warrior who did his Christian duty by going on crusade in the Holy Land. His personality meant he gained loyalty from his men. Richard was deeply influenced by chivalry, which means he was brave, proud and courteous. Being chivalric means he would protect the weak and do justice for his people. Richard admired ruthlessness, which meant he was willing to show severe brutality. For example, after the Battle of Acre, he had 2,500 Muslims beheaded. You're going to look at that a lot more later. And Richard showed that he was selfish at times. He broke his feudal oath going against his father. Remember, the feudal oath was that pledge of loyalty in return for land. Okay? So your job is to fill in that table and to build up 